it must be protected by three expedient things, three significant things for an altar to be protected. Let's say you have, have raised your altar, you must protect that altar. But there are three things which are very significant that must protect that altar. As I gave the last week, but one. If any pledge, if you have got, just ask for a mic. If three things, and those things I mentioned them on my um, synopsis when I was giving definitions. That's when I mentioned those things on my print. That's why I mentioned those things. So I was I was not rushing, so you could not miss those things. Three things. All right, for the sake of our time, I said whenever you erect an altar against an altar that was erected against you, number one, there must be a priest who protects that altar, and that priest is you. So which means if in your family there's an altar of poverty, then you discover it, then you erect an altar against that altar, it must have a priest who works and functions day 24 7. You may be going to work, you may be going to school, but you must make sure that each of the time your altar is protected. That's the first thing. Then number two, I said every altar should have a sacrifice. Every altar should have a sacrifice. What triggers the power of an altar is the sacrifice. Without any sacrifice, an altar is just a monument. If maybe you pay 20,000 rands to build the altar anyway, if uh, you don't guard, guard that altar of yours, the devil will always come to attack you. If you erect again an altar, there must be a sacrifice upon that altar. That's why the Bible clearly says, if you, if you look at, at David, David, he did things that were against God's will. He took census. After taking census, see, God came to David and he said that there are three options that I'm going to give you. Either three and a half years of, of, of famine or six months in the wilderness, but your enemies must be after you every day, or three days of uh, a demonic plague. Then David said, okay, I need three days of that plague. So God had to send an angel that had to, to, that had to kill all the, the, the Israelites. The same angel that was assigned in the book of Exodus was assigned in the time of David. For three days, Israel died. Then God, the prophet, came to, 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 to David and said to David, because today is the third day, I want you to go to honor his threshing floor. Because the angel that has been killing people is stationed there. Go there, rush right now, erect an altar. Then he, when he went to honor his threshing floor, honor his seeing David, he respected David and he said to a man of God, I'm going to give you my threshing floor for free. I'll give you livestock. I'll give you flour. And David said, I am going to take it for free. I want to sacrifice so that this thing may be lifted up. Because if David had taken it for free, it means there was no sacrifice. So whatever order that was going to create there, it was not going to trigger the mess of God. So he said, I'm going to pay you the amount of your threshing floor. Biblically, a threshing floor is not just a smooth rock. A threshing floor can be 40 hectares of land. So David paid for that. So I'm just trying to put emphasis on a sacrifice, that every altar should have a sacrifice. And that sacrifice should be a sacrifice with a consistency. Which means, if you are a priest to an, your altar, you must start with the, one, the person that is controlling an altar in your family, a demonic altar. Then the same consistency of that demonic priest is the same consistency that you must pledge on your altar. Uh, giving an example, let's use money. If a demonic priest is paying five rand every month on that satanic altar, so that in your family you may continue to suffer anti marriage, you must make sure that the same consistency, don't pay five rand January, then you wait for the altar to be lifted. Both this demonic 
actress is always making sacrifices. So your altar now will be submerged and subdued and conquered by this.